Mike, I'll start with you. Was the Court of Appeal right or wrong in your view? I respect the decision, but ultimately they're wrong. Uh, I agree with the um, judgment of the High Court. Uh, essentially, they've argued that the uh, Rwanda plan violates uh, Article 3 of the Convention of Human Rights. That is, it puts um, asylum seekers in danger of being deported to a country where they could be you know, tortured or uh, humiliated in some other way. But, you know, as, as Lord Burnett points out, this is simply false. Um, the vast majority of these people don't have passports. They will be sent to Rwanda with British documents. And Rwanda does not have bilateral agreements with these countries. They, they cannot deport uh, the asylum seekers. If they reject their applications, they, they cannot deport them to countries where they're tortured or persecuted. So, you know, for me, uh, it, it's, it's a wrong decision um, completely. For you, it doesn't, it doesn't add up. David, do you think it's right, you're an, you're an international human rights lawyer, do you think it's right that two judges can make a decision that potentially completely blows apart Rishi Sunak's plan, the government's policy, one of their flagship policies? Do you think that's right? Good, good afternoon, Emily. I mean, I think what we've got to look at, the, the system, the law that there is at the moment that has put this in place, that the judge's job is to is that the, they're looking at whether or not this policy breaches that law. That law in itself was put in by previous politicians when we look at what, what we're looking at. So do I think it's right? It's the system that we have. And yes, I think it's right that they do that. That's the, the, it would be the same for any law or in any case. Um, and that's the situation that we have. And you know, it's very interesting earlier on when you were mentioning um, Rishi Sunak saying that he fundamentally disagrees with the, the, the findings. But if we all remember back to April when this policy was put in place, Suella Braverman at the time said that she could not guarantee that this was would not breach existing laws. So why are the government putting in place policies that at the beginning they must have known were breaching these laws and would end up in mm. the courts? But, but, Mike, does the law then need to be changed? If the government can't fulfil its promise to the people to control borders, does the law need to change? Do you think there's a real chance that we could have a serious political debate about leaving the ECHR? Of course, the judge's ruling at the Court of Appeal was based on a breach of Article 3. Hmm. Uh, hopefully. Um... Obviously, the European Convention on Human Rights is embedded within the Human Rights Act. Uh, we've been members of the European Court of Human Rights uh, before the Human Rights Act. So my hope is that we can have a serious debate on the Human Rights Act, amend it, abolish or abolish it, replace it with a British Bill of Rights. Uh, my personal view is I, I, I think that's a great uh, policy, uh, policy avenue to go down. Uh, I'd also support us withdrawing from the Council of Europe, which would make the su Supreme Court the ultimate authority, yeah. not the European Court of Human Rights. So yes, the, the legal yeah. architecture in the UK needs to be reformed. And the Conservatives have been in power for a very long time. And th they haven't really taken this matter seriously. Uh, they've put the cart before the horse. They've introduced this uh, Rwanda plan, and I'm, I, I yeah. think it could work. You yeah. need the legal architecture there just, to I'm, implement it. I'm sorry to interrupt. Just, just David, lastly, um, what would happen if the government didn't listen to the courts, ignored their ruling, and just went with the deportations? What would, what would happen? Well, that's that's something I considered actually when when, when I heard the language coming out of the the, the number ten number ten and um, you know that's something which um, I think would be very worrying because we have the rule of law in this country and when you have a government and this is this is at the moment this is our d domestic law because as as as, as Mike mentioned this is the, the the law that it relates to from the European Court of Human Rights has been enacted is, is in English law at the moment so we can't blame this on European judges we in the past we Brits passed this so if we then have another government ignoring the laws that a previous one passed where does that end up and i think that would be a very very slippery dangerous slope to go down and mm. um, but it's one that i think that they probably are considering 
I just think a lot of British people, and of course people have very different views about this, but I think a, a lot, a lot of British people are watching this and thinking, here we go again, the courts are trying to dictate what our government can do. We wanted control of our borders and it's not <clears throat> being done. But uh, we'll talk again.